Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Uh, I wanted to do a just another collection update for my private library, if you will. Um, my my uh, my book collection. <coughs> um, I've got six books, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six. Arranged it in order. We'll start off with the youngest first, and then um, as the further down we go, the the older they are. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think I got the all all these books actually for a pound each. So these only cost me six quid altogether. So let's start. First off, we have a beautiful green book. Um, and it is poems of Byron Keats and Shelley, or Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein. Um, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful book with a beautiful um, inside. I don't know if you can quite see that there. The binding is very nice. Um, and it's the complete works of Lord Byron. And I picked this up because, one, um, I want to get into uh, reading more poems. I want to want to get to read more poems and read more as well. And poems are great for that because um, these are sonnets. So it's 14 lines. It, easy stuff to read. Um, that and my name is Byron. And I thought it would be pretty cool if I had something in my uh, private library... Um, that had my name on it. So, yes, that's lovely. Where can I put this? Um, oh, I've not set this up very well. Right, here we go. Next, we've got a very, very cool one. Um, we've got A Hundred Great Lives. Um, this book's a bit more plain, but um, I, I think it works. The red greatly contrasts the golden uh, lettering. Um, it's by Owen Harms. I, th I think that's German. Um, this book was published, I think, there's no date in there, but um, here's a, a picture of Winston Churchill. Um, there's no date, but it's around 50s or 60s. So it's, oh, I've <laughs> got to tell you the date on this one. Oh, uh, this book, the first one is dated 1982, so that makes it 42 years old. Um, I don't think it's the youngest in my collection, um, although I don't know. Anyway, 100 Greatest Lives, this I think, based on the, um, the ageing and the yellowing of the pages, um, I have to say it's around 60 to 70 years old, so published at around the 50s, maybe the 60s. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. Um, it's sort of shortened versions of biographies and the lives and all sorts of others. And in the context page, it's really cool. It's split up into sections. You've got scientists and inventors, um, writers and poets, so Shakespeare, um, uh, Shakespeare, Dickens, um, who else she got in writers? John Bunyan, Jean, Jack, Jux, Rissa, I can't read that. Um, you know, scientists and inventors, you've got Archimedes of Socrates, you've got uh, Galileo, you've got William Harvey, Isaac Newton, um, who we all know invented gravity. Um, where is he? Uh, you've got Orville and Wilbur Wright, um, who invented the plane. Uh, Nikola Tesla is not on here, which is quite surprising. Um, leaders and reformers, Aristotle, Muhammad, Martin Luther, artists and musicians, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo. You've got great women, discoverers and explorers, soldiers and statesmen. Um, and on the last index page, um, no, it's just that, uh, which is so cool. This has about, I think, 800 pages, maybe, I think, seven, no, not 800, that's 750, 760. I mean, it starts with Aristotle, but it's a very, uh, very interesting book. Uh, it's a great read. 
I highly suggest it, and I got that for a pound at a local bookshop. Um, these two are paired together because I brought them together. Um, it's a pound each. Whoopsie daisies. Um, and they are, and this is really, really cool fun. I think it's an absolutely beautiful book because with me, it's not just about the writing, it's about the aesthetic, the look. Um, we have a couple of books here. We've got The Old Curiosity Shop, and these are both by Charles Dickens, um, with A Child's History of England and David Copperfield. Now, if you have a look at the binding, it's very cool. This is part of a set that I'm slowly collecting. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but something's inscribed on there. Um, very cool. Now, these were published roughly at around the 40s or 30s. There's no date precisely, but look at that lovely illustration you see in there. It's a fantastic book. And uh, a fantastic read. Um, it's about, oh blimey, 500, 730, so about 760 pages, which is mental because you wouldn't, you know, the pages are so thin, you wouldn't think that they've got roughly the same amount of pages, would you? Um, that's the beauty of thin paper, as you'll see later. Um, they're the same. I don't know if you've got an illustration in this one. Editors know. Oh yes, the friendly waiter and Jay. I think I said. Um, lovely, lovely illustrations. Right, penultimately, I brought this one uh, recently. Just give me a second. Right, sorry about that. Um, penultimately, we have Chambers' etymological et et etymological. Dictionary, in last edition, um, and I, I, I picked this up for a pound again, and this is all from the same bookshop. Um, it's fantastic. Um, I picked this up because I, I love writing, and I'm currently um, in the process of writing two books. I'm writing an urban legend anthology series, um, so it's an anthology around urban legends from all over the world. You've got ghosts, witches, goat men, um, wendigo, stuff, stuff like that. Um, and I thought a dictionary would really help. Um, it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic little um, book. It's so simple and, and plain. Sadly, this bit's detached or detaching. Um, but it's a lovely, it's a lovely book. It's very warm. Um, Somebody signed it. It says Carrie or Corey. I don't know, but it's a, another beautiful book. Um, there's the inside, the People's Edition. That's amazing. It's a fantastic little book. The pages are nice to to hold as well. Um, printed in Great Britain. Oh, 1924. There is a date. Sorry. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little date just there, 1924. So this book is 100 years old. Now, I thought this was around the 30s, so I'm getting good with my basic ages, but the pages are so beautiful. I mean, look at that, and bless the bindings going, but the pages are so, so beautiful. And so, whoops, and so, so thin and... And just so, it's such a sight to behold, books like this. I mean, books are so unappreciated these days, and it's it's such a shame, because they're magnificent uh, things. But then, lastly, and this was a diamond find, because in that bookshop, um, I, talk, I was talking to him the day, uh, today, sorry, earlier, and I was saying, um, or I was asking him, what was the oldest book you've had? And he said, well, a couple of days ago, we had one from the 1700s. And I was gutted I missed it by a couple of days, but I did see something, um, and it's the uh, the dates in Roman numerals, but I managed to work it out, and this book, and it beats, it predates my oldest, oldest book, which is 1899, it predates it by, I think, 24, 25 years, something like that, um, this is a, is an old Bible, um, it's an absolutely beautiful book. I mean, look at the old binding at the back there. It's fantastic. 
couple of golden pages. I mean, it's very, very battered, or battered, sorry, and um, worn in. But it's such a, I mean, look at that. It truly is a sight to behold. I mean, it, here you are, it says Holy Bible. But even just holding a book this old is such a gift. Um, as you open it, this is all that comes in. And I think a page was ripped out. Printed at Oxford, at the Oxford University Press. Um, and down there, the Roman numerals. And it's M D C C C or M D C C C L X V, which translates to eighteen sixty five. Eighteen sixty five. This book, my my second oldest book now, is one hundred and twenty five years. This book is one hundred and fifty years old, and somehow in still far better condition. Now, me uh, personally. I'm not a religious uh, person. Is that a book, Mark? I'm not a party. Oh, it is, does it? Oh, my God. That's so cool. This piece of ribbon is 150 years old. Now, I'm not a, a religious person. But, I mean, it's it's amazing. It's so, I mean, the pages are so delicate and, and, and thin. It's, it's fantastic. Um, I love, I love old stuff and it's just, yeah. So that was my top, no, not my top six, sorry. My new six, uh, books. In fact, I'm going to keep it in here until I put it back. I've got it in a little drawer, um, little drawer on my, on my desk, or not on my desk, sorry, my bedside cabinet, is that what you call it? I've got drawers on them, and um, they're in one of the drawers there. Um, yeah, it's it's all quite neatly packed, actually, but um, yeah, I like to fold it away and put it in here, mainly because, again, this is my old edge block, and I do not want it, do not want it getting ruined. Now, if I were to pick a top three out of these, It'd have to be, this would be number one, simply, no, sorry, number three, simply because it's the oldest, that's what earns it is points. Other than that, it's just another Bible, you know. Um, number two, these would have to be joint for number two, bit of Charles Dickens. And it's very close, by the way, between 100 Greatest Lives and these two, but... Whereas, the, actually, this will give you a lot more information about a lot more different people and sort of broaden the horizons, if you will. Um, I mean, you can't beat Charles Dickens. He was one of the, if not one of the best writers of all time. Um, yeah, and I cannot wait to give these six books a proper read. Well, four books. I'm not going to read the Bible. Um, and you don't really read a dictionary. You use a dictionary. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for coming along. And I will see you guys in the next video. Um, where I will be showing you my top five oldest books. Have fun.